part, uh, in the first part of our discussion about pipelining. Para. So, una na design tayo ng data path, single cycle data path, tapos yung control unit, okay? kasi we're designing the processor. Yung single data path, uh, single cycle data path that we designed uh, implements three classes of instructions, the arithmetic instructions, uh, load and storage instructions, and uh, uh, CBC, okay, jump instruction, conditional brush instruction. So, yung unang ginawa natin, we incorporated that in a single cycle uh, CPU design. Okay. Then, we proceeded, we said that, that, sing, that the single cycle uh, processor design is quite, uh, baga, hindi siya perform, uh, maganda yung performance kasi uh, there are some steps in the execution of the instructions na Ano natin na tawag dito, uh, idle yung ibang components ng execution ng, ng processor, yung data pa. So, we this, uh, na maybe we decided that maybe we can a uh, pipeline or uh, somehow while an instruction is being executed at a certain stage, we can execute another instruction. So, dun natin na-introduce yung pipelining. Kasi, ang nangyayari, we can have multiple cycles and then, uh, what we can do is, uh, we can reduce the time for each cycle and then execute instructions okay, uh, simultaneously. Okay, uh, if an instruction is finished in one stage. Okay. And we said that in the, there are five, in our design, in our pipeline design, our main idea is to divide the execution of an instruction into five stages. So you have instruction fetch, instruction decode, execution, memory access, and the write back. Okay. So those are uh, the main stages. So we said that in the pipeline design, pipeline design, okay, uh, we also need to introduce intermediate registers or somehow some form of caches. Why? Why do we need to introduce that? Because yung data na na-derive dito, okay, kailangan ma-store dito temporarily kasi habang nag-execute yung instruction, kailangan na yung data na yun. So, kailangan na intermediate registers. And in doing so, if we have pipelining, then uh, there are certain issues that must be addressed. Okay? And we call them hazards. And there are three types of hazards. We have data hazards, we have structure hazard, and we have uh, control hazard. Structure hazard is already addressed kasi meron tayong hiwalay na memory for instruction and meron tayong hiwalay na memory for data. Kasi sa isang single uh, clock cycle, hindi natin pwedeng uh, parang gamitin yung share, kung shared yung memory nila. But in real systems, usually, the instruction and data memory are together, okay? And then, uh, we were talking about data hazards, okay? So the main issue is basically uh, the result of the previous operation is needed for the second instruction, for the next instruction. However, if the value needed by the second instruction is not yet available, okay? then that will be a problem. So we discuss techniques like, uh, first, we need to be able to detect the, that there is a data hazard, okay? Uh, the main reason here is, for example, you have the register X2, the value in this stage is 10, clock cycle one is 10, and then at clock cycle five, okay? Uh, after performing this operation, the, the new value is minus 20, okay? Now, at this point, if you execute this instruction immediately without waiting for the completion at clock cycle 5, the execution, which is uh, ending, which will require the ALU, right? the data at this point is still 10, not yet updated. Right? So, that is a problem. When AND is executing at this point in the CPU, the value of x2 is 10. But the intention actually is the value should be negative 20. So that is what we mean by hazard. Right? Of a data hazard. So 
uh, the same with uh, the other uh, with the next instruction so this instruction also at this point uh, it's using 10 but at this point nasa half pa lang siya ng execution okay so 10 pa rin yung magagamit niya so still data hazard so we devise some mechanisms to be able to somehow detect hazard programmatically okay to do that we need to name registers in the uh, pipeline registers. And that's what we did here. And we have these conditions to be able to do that. Okay? And then we finally designed a forwarding unit. Okay? The forwarding unit basically, uh, see, this is the ALU. Notice that the original, uh, when we're talking about forwarding, we are focusing on the execution stage, okay? execution stage of the pipeline. Uh, if you look at so, so this is the final pipeline control. Okay, so let's look at this ALU here, and the ALU here, okay, uh, accepts two inputs, okay, one from this one and another from this one, which is determined by the multiplexer. Ano yung palulusutin niya, okay, which is from the ALU source. Okay, now to introduce forwarding, okay, to introduce forwarding. Basically, okay, we simply added uh, another multiplexer here. And here, the multiplexer, instead of, uh, compared to this, instead of having two inputs only, okay, instead of having uh, two inputs only, okay, so we have uh, input sources, so you have here, uh, three input sources which will come from the values in the pipeline registers. Okay? You get the idea? So, the forwarding unit will determine kung yung instruction niya nag execute dito sa stage na to, ano yung gagamitin niyang parameter. Okay? So, traditionally, hihintayin mo yan hanggang makatapos bago ka makalating dito. Okay? So, dito, pwede mo nang makuha yung result, ALU result, okay? Halimbawa, ito yung next instruction, and then you can use the forwarding unit to determine kung palulusutin siya dito, kung kailangan siya. Okay? So that's what we mean by forwarding, and this is the main control uh, logic for that. So you now have three options, three possible sources, three possible sources for the inputs of the ALU. Okay? So this one is uh, the data, uh, data hazard naman when it comes to memory, but... Uh, Basically, you just have to uh, update certain conditions, okay? So, yeah. And these are the additional conditions to uh, uh, update the forwarding logic, right? Okay? So, these are the, uh, ito yung forwarding part, okay? And these are the conditions that must be satisfied if you want to forward A or forward B, okay? So, this is the final. Okay? This is the final design for uh, for the data path uh, with forwarding. So, in addition to the forwarding unit, uh, you now have here the kumbaga mas kompleto. You have the control unit. So, fino forward again. Sabi natin in the pipelining, uh, yung control unit, the yung output niya fino forward niya lang dun sa uh, pipeline registers. Sa yung mga yan, redetermine kung ano yung gagawin nung, uh, yung, usually these are write registers, okay, yung mga yan. Uh, the next one is yung load use hazard. So, we said last time that the load use hazard uh, example is, uh, if you're fetching, uh, in, if you're fetching data from memory, okay, and uh, the next instruction will use that data from memory, okay, hindi mo talaga magagamit agad yun, okay. So, the solution is actually stalling, okay? So this is the condition. Okay? Kung meron tayong ordinary data hazard na nag-write pag sa register, yun yung condition na sa quiz kanina, okay? So ito naman para sa, ano, para sa load use uh, data, so detection, okay? So uh, if the instruction decode execute mem read, these are basically ano lang to, uh, flags, well, bits lang to, control lines. And the destination register, okay, RN is the first uh, register, okay, so the destination is equal to the uh, first operand register, 
okay? Or the destination register in the ID EX uh, pipeline register. This value is equal to the uh, instruction fetch decode. Okay? So, malalaman, malalaman mo yan. Ito yung instruction fetch, fetch decode na, na register. Okay? So, malalaman mo agad yan na pag may ginagamit siya, okay? may gagamitin siya, okay? sa stage na yon na equal dun sa ano sa destination register dun sa IDEX na ano IDEX na pipeline register then okay, you need to uh, insert a bubble and install okay. so yeah so the question now is how do you install the pipelines kung bakit paano mo ipo-post yung ano yung pipeline so hindi ka pwedeng mag-forward basically sa load use hindi ka pwedeng mag-forward so yun yung scenario. Now uh, you need to insert uh, bubbles here. Okay. So how do you stall? How do you stall the pipeline? What's the technique? Paano ipopost yung execution? Okay. So to do that, okay, uh, you force the control values in the id slash ex register to zero. So asan ba yung id ex register natin nandito? Okay. So kung gusto mo mag-stall, okay. Is it zero mo lang yung mga values na nandito sa uh, control register na nandito, okay? So that's basically the effect of uh, uh, stalling, which results to uh, stalling. So X, mem, and uh, right back, walang gagawin, okay? So X, mem, right back, pag zero mo yan, wala silang gagawin dito, di ba? Kasi ito yung nag-trigger para mag-perform siya ng operation, eh. Okay? So, pag zero mo yan, hindi na ito magpo-proceed and you basically stall the pipeline. Okay? And you also need to prevent the update of the program counter. Okay? Kasi, pag hindi mo prevent yung pag-update ng program counter, kukunin niya na yung next instruction. Di ba? So, you have to prevent that. Okay? So, uh, to do that, okay, uh, you need to decode the instruction again. Okay? And then some uh, you can uh, uh, the next instruction is fetch again, okay? which basically, kung ano yung previous instruction, okay? and the execution will now continue with the previous instruction. So halimbawa ito, okay? so LDUR, okay? so you need to stall, okay? kasi meron kang uh, itong part na to, okay? x2 x2. Okay, lo-load mo, kailangan mo dito. Okay. So, pagdating dito sa clock cycle 2, okay, you need to stall the pipeline. Okay. And after that, okay, saka mo lang uli, fetch, saka execute yung next instruction, and then you can, you can proceed with the uh, execution to the pipeline. You get the idea? So, that's, that's the concept of... Uh, stalling. Kasi you cannot do forwarding at this point. Marami kang masayang. Kung mag-forward ka, uh, basically, uh, parang uh, you, you lose a lot of clock cycles. Unlike here, you only use, uh, you only lose uh, one clock cycle. Okay. So, this is now a more complete uh, data path. So, I recommend no, na pag nag-aaral kayo ng Pag nag-review kayo, i-post nyo na itong mga diagram ito kasi nandun na, na, na naka-embed yung bagay yung lahat ng design decisions, lahat ng considerations kung bakit ganyan siya. So you can print this and uh, just study the different components. Okay? We have the forwarding unit and then the detection unit. So uh, yung detection unit, basically those are just decoders. Okay? So those are just decoders. And they basically they just uh, update the certain uh, wires. Okay? Depends sa gagawin niya. Okay. So, stalls and performance. Okay. Stalls reduce performance. Basically, kasi magpo-post yung ano, execution of this instruction. But, syempre, you cannot, you cannot avoid stalling because uh, you need to get correct results. And the compiler basically can do that for you. Okay. But also, uh, you need, as a programmer, sometimes you also need to understand how these things work. Okay? Now, we, we move on to the last uh, hazard okay? uh, for, for the leg V8 design. 
for the branch hazards. Okay? So the branch hazards, the main issue with branch branch hazard is that okay, may pipelining tayo. So let's take a let's take a look at this instruction. Com uh, compare uh, branch to zero. Compare branch to zero. X one eight. Ibig sabihin itong instruction na to, pag zero yung value ng x1, okay, 8 times, 40, 40 plus 8 times 4, okay, dun siya magja-jump. Okay? So, 40 plus 8 times 4, yun yung pag true, yung pag zero yung x1. Okay? Now, if you have, you're implementing, uh, if you have a pipeline processor, okay, uh, Ideally, pag nagpasok na siya dito sa clock cycle 2, okay, i-execute mo na dapat yung next instruction. However, you still don't know late in the stage mo pa, actually after pa ng memory, uh, if you look at the original design, no, uh, yung branch natin. Okay. So, ito yung part na magdedetermine kung magba-branch siya. Okay? Ito yung part na ma-determine kung magba-branch siya. Okay? So you have the program counter here. Okay? And then, ito yung uh, end gate na magsasabi kung magba-branch siya o hindi. So, you notice that in this pipeline design, it is after the, uh, uh, right after the XMEM pipeline register. Okay? So, Doon mo pa malalaman kung magbabranch siya o hindi. Okay. So, para ang mangyayari, okay, nag-e-execute na to, and then, pagdating dito, uh, pagdating dito, nalaman mo pala na magbabranch pala siya. Okay. So, para ang nangyayari ngayon is nasaya ngayon yung nasaya ngayon yung pag-execute mo ng ganito kasi magbabranch naman pala siya dito eh after matapos. So, sayang nung pag-fetch mo nito. Okay? So, the idea of uh, uh, handling branch hazards is pwede mo bang gawa ng paraan na uh, ang mangyayari is hindi mo muna ipifetch yung uh, next instructions. Hintayin mo muna na ma-check niya kung magbabranch nga siya o hindi. Kasi kung magbabranch naman siya, i-fetch mo na yung next instruction kung saan siya magbabranch. Okay. So yun yung idea ng ano ng uh, uh, ng uh, 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 ng control hazard, branch hazards. Okay. So sa mem pa malalaman kung ano, sa mem pa malalaman kung after pa ng mem, mapapalalaman kung magpo-proceed yung branch o hindi. Okay? So the technique is uh, flashing this instruction. Okay? So uh, one solution, ang um, isa sa mga solution to address branch hazards is uh, ang kagandahan naman nito, inassume mo na yung branch will not be taken. Ah, uh, yes. You assume that the branch will not be taken. Ah, uh, itong, itong branch na to, hindi naman magtutru yan eh. So, continue na tayo. Okay. Kasi empirically, by experimentation, they realize that that heuristic, na pag inassume mo na hindi, hindi, mag, hindi magtutru yung branch, hindi mangyayari yung branch, i-fetch mo na yung instruction niya, yung probability nun ay mataas. Kaya okay lang yung ganun yung parang assumption. Okay? So, kung nag-ano man, kung nag- uh, kung nag man yung condition na yon, i-flash mo na lang siya. However, the problem is, what if, ano, uh, pwede pa ba natin i-improve? Kung baga, bawasan natin yung ifa-flash na instruction. Kasi when you flash the instruction, it will also uh, take some clock cycles. Okay? So, the question is, how do you reduce the branch delay? Okay? So, how do you de reduce the branch delay? Okay? So, the solution, kasi yung pag-determine ng branching ay kung magyayari yung branch ay after, dun sa execution stage. Okay? Uh, the solution is to move the hardware uh, to move uh, the hardware to determine the outcome to the instruction decode stage. So, malalaman mo kung magbabranch siya, okay? Diba, instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute, memory, type back, okay? Sa branch instructions, malalaman mo na 
kung magja-jump siya or okay, mag-take yung brush na yon at this point. So what if you move the what if you move the detection dito sa area na to? Okay? Earlier in the pipeline. Okay? So that's what we mean by that reducing delay. So basically you need to uh, uh, introduce a uh, additional hardware basically the add the other actually you move lang yung other okay. so uh, wala dito so you move lang yung add other forward makita naman natin yan okay. and then uh, okay and then that's it okay. so you basically you, you have to update the position of the other that adds the the value. Kasi, when you perform a branch, you need to determine whether the condition is true, and then you have to update the, if the condition is true, you have to update the uh, value of the program counter. Okay? So, uh, that's how it's uh, done. So, you have this example code, okay? To subtract x10, uh, subtract x4 minus x8 minus x10, and then uh, uh, branch if zero, Okay. okay. So, ito ngayon yung kanyang, uh, ito ngayon kanyang uh, example uh, sa clock cycle tree. Okay. Uh, mga, uh, okay. So, kailangan mo ng additional na flag here or na control bit uh, instruction fetch flash para ma flash yung message instruction so let's say uh, the pipeline we have uh, so extend okay so at clock cycle 3 nandito yung ano yung execution ng uh, instruction na sub And then uh, this is the branch instruction. So, uh, what is being illustrated in this diagram is minuv mo na ngayon uh, detection ng ano detection ng uh, branching, okay? Kung magbabranch o hindi. So at this point, okay? so in that way you somehow lessen the delay. Okay? Don't pag check, kasi otherwise dito mo pa malalaman kung magpe-perform ng branch okay so to do that uh, you need to add you need to have additional uh, uh, control bits like the instruction fetch, fetch flash okay to flash the next instruction in the ifid pipeline register okay so at clock 4 okay so if the branch will not be taken okay so you only have okay, okay you only have one bubble here, okay? So, uh, what is being illustrated here is that unlike in this previous uh, illustration where in the heuristic is uh, you assume that the branch is not taken, okay? You have three clock cycles being uh, flushed, okay? instructions being flushed, okay? But here, you only have one bubble okay? because what you did is to simply forward earlier okay the unit that determines whether the branch will be taken or not okay? the idea. so yun yung simple explanation yan. but uh, let's uh, skip the details of the no? but that's the general idea of uh, how the meaning of this uh, diagram okay okay so we were able to reduce the delay Okay, by the, uh, sa branch, sa branching by reducing the number of uh, bubbles or uh, NOPs. Okay. Okay. So now, so you have two techniques. So we assume that uh, the branch will not be taken, and another one is moving the hardware part in the instruction decode part for determining whether the branch will be taken or not. So another. Uh, improvement that we can do is that we only have five stage pipeline so somehow that is the techniques that we presented is are somehow uh, easier 
Okay. But if we have, let's say, a complex processor and you have uh, more uh, more pipeline stages, eventually, dadami din yan. Okay? So, lima lang yung ating ano, stages. What if madami na yan? So, syempre, dadami din yung uh, NOP. Okay? So, one solution is introduce what you call dynamic branch predict prediction. So, this is a, these are more advanced mechanism. Okay? So, you try to detect whether the, the branch will be taken by introducing additional hardware in addition to the basic hardware. So, the technique one, uh, one technique is to introduce additional memory, parang cache memory, to determine whether the branch will be taken or not. Okay? So, use dynamic prediction. Okay? So, you introduce uh, a branch prediction buffer. So, in addition to the to the data memory, the instruction memory, maglalagay ka pa nitong history table or prediction buffer. So, it's another memory. So, this is a memory. Uh, actually, it's some kind of a hash table and it is indexed by the recent branch instruction addresses. Okay. So, normally, yung... Uh, so, sa branch kasi, kailangan muna ng addresses. Eh. Okay. So, you need to have information about the memory addresses. Now, in the dynamic branch prediction, meron kang lookup table na yung address ng instruction, siya yung magiging key mo dun sa uh, prediction table. Tapos may flag dun na nagsasabi kung tinake ba yung branch na yun o hindi. Okay. You get the idea? So, 40. So, ito yung address ng instruction na to. Meron kang hash table, 40. Ay yung second column niya ay... Uh, yung first column niya ay yung memory address ng uh, instruction, second column niya, kung 1 or 0. 1 pag tinake yung branch na yon, 0 pag hindi tinake yung branch na yon. So, parang nire-record mo kung tinake ba yung branch na yon o hindi. So, that's the idea of dynamic branch prediction. Okay? Now, to execute a branch, you have first have to check the table. Okay? So, when you check the table, you expect the same uh, outcome. Okay? and start fetching uh, from fall through or target and otherwise to flush mo yung pipeline okay. so that's what we mean by that so may example ba tayo so one solution one implementation okay uh, one implementation is called a one bit predictor okay. so meron ka lang parang uh, isang bit to determine whether the uh, uh, to mark okay, whether the instruction is uh, uh, the branch is taken or not. Okay. So so you have this loop. Okay. So you have the inner loop. Okay. Put it here. The outer. So you have example. You have uh, uh, this one here is uh, a one bit uses one bit predictor. And if you use one bit predictor, okay, pwede mong ma mis predict yung uh, uh, execution niya twice. Dun sa una tapos yung sa labas okay. so one uh, the next solution is basically to use a two bit predictor okay. so ang goal kasi dito is a branch prediction is as much as possible yung lookup table mo the way you access the lookup table should be uh, kumbaga yung percentage nun equal dapat dun sa branch taken okay. so you have this uh, one bit predictor but this is limited because dalawang beses mami misinterpret yung ano yung information na nandun sa ano sa sa branch table uh, sa sa prediction table okay? so you have a two bit so you introduce two bit predictor okay? actually sa 125 gagamitin din tong ganito when you when we talk about uh, the translation uh, translation look aside buffer okay so you basically have a state transition diagram okay so, kailangan dalawang, dalawang bits mag-1 okay, para masabi mo na, ah, yung branch na to ay uh, will be taken so you can load that uh, branch, yung next instruction, yung instruction dun sa address na yun, nagbabranchan niya, para yun na yung nakasalang sa, uh, nakasalang sa pipeline. Okay? So, the next one is calculating the branch target. Okay. So, the, fir uh, the first step basically is just determining kung magbabranch ba siya o hindi. So, the idea is, is like this. Uh, pag magpipredict mo, 
na magbabrand siya, ang isalam mo na dun sa pipeline, yung pagja-jump pa niya. Huwag na yung next instruction sa kan. Huwag na yung succeeding instruction, the sequential instruction. Okay. So, there are two approaches, one bit predictor and the two bit predictor. Okay. Now, the next one is calculating uh, the branch target. Okay. So, nalaman mo na ngayon na, okay, uh, okay, magbabranch tayo. Kailangan na natin i-load yung instruction dun sa memory na pagbabranch niya. Okay. So, yung step na yun, yung pag-calculate nun, will also be important. Okay. So, even with predictor, we still need to calculate the target address and that actually incurs uh, a one cycle penalty for a taken branch okay kasi syempre uh, dun sa ano natin sa design natin okay uh, kailangan mo pa rin i-calculate yung ano i-calculate yung uh, next ano next instruction okay ay uh, y- yung address okay kung saan siya kung saan niya kukunin dun sa instruction memory okay so that will take that will eat up one cycle okay so what you can do is you have a branch target uh, buffer. Okay. So kung gusto mong to speed up yung ano, to speed. Okay, nadalaman mo na na magjajump yan. Ito yung ad, ito yung kailangan i-compute yung pagjajump niya. Yung pag-compute na yon, that will take one cycle kasi dadaan ka dun sa ano sa ALU eh. Okay. So another way to speed that up is to use a branch target buffer. Okay. So ibig sabihin noon parang ikakash mo na another 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 component hardware component na doon mo na ilalagay o nag branch to before okay ito yung pinuntahan niya so para hindi niya na i-calculate yon ilo up niya na lang yon yun yung purpose nito okay? yung branch target buffer okay if it an instruction is is branch predicted taken can fetch the target immediately okay get the idea okay so Yon basically yung pag-handle ng ano, uh, pag-handle ng uh, hazard. So we discuss three uh, data, uh, two data and control hazards. So I hope uh, naiintindihan niyo yung ano. Yung details uh, nakakahilo but uh, we need to understand this. Ang um, the best way to understand it actually is iran yung simulator, yung leg B8 mas uh, mas madaling sundan yung flow kung ano yung nangyayari kasi makikita mo yung values eh. Okay. Pag dito lang, static, hindi mo makakita. So, uh, sakit nga lang yung ulo mo pag trace ng values ng ano, uh, mga inputs. Okay? So, the next one is exceptions and interrupts. So, yung mga nag-1, 2, 5, ewan ko kung ma-appreciate nyo ito. Okay? So, di ba, gumagamit kayo ng interrupts. Okay? Ginawa nyo naman sa laboratory. Paano ba ini-implement sa hardware yun? Okay? So, we've been designing processors na merong data path, merong control unit, smooth yung execution niya. Okay? Paano maisisingit yung interrupt doon? Diba? Now, in the lab, for example, sa 125, kailangan do- meron tayong interrupt handler. Diba? Doon sa parang yung clock tick, for example. Okay? Yung clock tick, kailangan mag-define ng callback na gagawin pag na-trigger yung clock tick. Yung clock tick is an interrupt. So, ibig sabihin, may nag-execute yung instruction, tapos na-trigger yung clock tick, yung execution ng instruction mo, let's say printf, titigil yun. Kasi, kukol niya yung ano, matitrigger yung interrupt, tapos gagawin yung ano, yung interrupt routine na, gina- na sinet mo para sa interrupt na yun. Okay? So, mahalaga rin yung exceptions and interrupts. Kung baga, ang bakit meron ganito? Kasi, ang assumption dito is, hindi naman perfect yung operation ng computer. Okay. At some point, no, at some point, magkakaroon ka ng error like floating point error, divide by zero, na hindi kaya ni handle ng processor. Okay? An- nalilito na siya. So, kailangan mo ng kailangan sa pag-design mo ng processor, may mechanism ka na uh, na pwede mong i-interrupt yung normal flow of execution. Okay? Dito ngayon po mapasok yung exceptions and interrupts. So, paano ini-implement 'yan? So, exceptions and interrupts are unexpected events requiring change in flow of control, okay? Nag-execute ka na ng instruction, okay? Smooth yan. May something na nangyari. Paano mo ma- ma-interrupt yung operation na yan? Diyan ngayon, pasok yung uh, exceptions and interrupts. So, may good use yung, ano, yung exceptions and interrupts, okay? 
yung good use is, halimbawa sa operating system design, pwede ka mag-gain ng control. Yung OS kernel will, will gain control of the system. Kasi pupunta sa kanya lagi yung control. Eh. Okay? For errors naman, pwede kang mag-gracefully mag, ano, mag handle. Halimbawa, nagkaroon lang ng divide by zero, kailangan mo na mag-reboot. Diba? Hindi naman maganda yon. Siguro, pag nagkaroon ng divide by zero, sabihin mo lang, you perform divide by zero, but you can still continue the operation of the computer. So, ganun yung idea. Okay? So, exception arises within the CPU. So, actually, tatlo to. Exceptions, interrupt, saka traps. Okay? Yun yung tatlong terms na medyo confusing sa operating system sa kasa computer architecture. Uh, dito sa textbook, sa 132, uh, pag sinabi exception, sa loob ng CPU nangyari. Okay? Sa loob ng processor. Okay? So, like, example, undefined opcode. May nilagay, alimbawa, may nilagay ka na instruction. Okay? Hindi alam nung, hindi kasama dun sa instruction set architecture ng machine. Ano yun? Error yun. Okay? Overflow. An example would be syscall. So, yung syscall sa 1.2.5, traps ang tawag doon. So, usually, when you refer to syscall, traps ang tawag doon, hindi exception. But, they arise within the CPU. Yung interrupt naman, this is from an external I.O. controller. An example of this will be the timer interrupt. Yung timer interrupt, naka-attach siya doon sa programmable interrupt timer. Okay? Tapos merong interrupt request line IRQ0, imamap mo siya sa isang, uh, sa isang uh, interrupt number dun sa x86. Okay? So, yun yun. Okay? And dealing with them without sacrificing performance is hard. Okay? Uh, in x86, you have the CLI and the STI. Di ba? CLI and the STI instructions. So, kaya sinasabi nila na wag gamitin yun kasi yung buong pipeline, okay, yung buong pipeline ng processor, walang gagawin pag disable mo yung interrupts. Okay? Or walang pwede mag-interrupt sa kanya, sa ginagawa niya. So, somehow, may, uh, may uh, problem yun pag halimbawa may important event na hindi ka pwede, hindi mo, hindi mo maka-handle, mamimiss mo. Okay? So, how do you handle exceptions? Okay? So, pag nagkaroon ng exceptions, Some example of this will be sa memory management, pa yung page fault exception or yung segmentation fault, for example. So you should have a a page fault handler. Actually, we call it a page fault handler. So ano ng gagawin mo pag mayro exception? Of course, you have to save the program counter, right? Of the offending or interrupted instruction. Kasi kailangan mabalikan mo yon, eh, right? So one two five probably you heard of return from trap, okay? So yeah, actually the hardware stores the the context or the register in in its kernel stack, okay? So sa hardware level, kailangan i-store mo yung program counter na yon, okay? And you also so sa leg V8, yung program counter na trigger na 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 interrupt will be stored in the exception link register or ELR. Tapos, yung uh, ispang register na kailangan is yung tinatawag na ESR, Exception Syndrome Register, which actually just a, a flag, parang flag, uh, flag, flags register, okay? na nagsasabi, since this is 32 bits, okay? na nagsasabi kung ano yung error na nangyari. Okay? So, kung 32 bits or 64 bits, that will be, you have a lot of possible combination. So, a lot of possible uh, uh, interrupt lines. So, alimbawa, yung sa, ano, sa, sa x86, 256, di ba? 256 yung interrupt lines, na interrupt vector niya. So, yun, yun yung limitation niya. Right? So, we'll assume 1 bit, 0 for undefined opcode, and 1 for overflow. So, yun yung, ano, yun yung example niya. We'll gagamit it later. Okay? <coughs> so, so, When you handle exception, pwede kang gumamit ng register. Or, ito yung familiar kayo, yung uh, vector interrupts. Okay? Yung sa x86, which is an interrupt vector table. Okay? So, meron kang uh, memory area na designated kung saan, pag na-trigger yung interrupt number na yon, 
pupunta siya doon sa address na naka magja-jump siya doon sa address na nakalagay doon sa ano sa sa interrupt vector table. Okay? So you have that what you call the base address, okay? And you have this uh, uh, code, okay? Or actually the address kung saan siya magja-jump, okay? So the instructions will either deal with the interrupt or jump to a real handler. Okay? So an example of this will be segmentation fault. Okay? Pag nag-segmentation fault, hindi mo kailangan i-reboot yung computer mo, di ba? mag error lang siya and then you get a new shell. Okay? So, you should just the idea. Okay? And kung titingnan nyo, mag-skip tayo and we'll go there here okay uh, yung sistema kung paano hina-handle yung interrupt is basically the same kung paano hina-handle yung control hazard okay so basically kailangan mo rin mag-flash ng instructions okay okay so, kaya may add it kanina meron doon sa control hazard na instruction fetch flash uh, ito, may, meron din pag-flash sa later stages. IF, ID, saka EX stages. Kailangan mong i-flash yung instruction nila para linisin. Kasi nagkaroon ng error eh. Kung nagkaroon ng error, invalid na yung ibang mga values na nandun. So you have to flash them. And then, uh, jump to the handler and then, since na-save mo yung program counter kung saan na-trigger yung interrupt or exception, uh, pwede mo siyang balikan later. Okay? So, we'll stop here and uh, continue uh, next meeting. Uh, hindi ko ma-explain in detail no, lahat ng mga mechanisms ng wiring dito. So, I recommend that you uh, please uh, read the textbook okay, and run the simulator para ma-visualize nyo ano yung nangyayari dun sa... Uh,